My name is Mary Glenda Japier, but I love um, the name Glenda. Well, Natisha Davis. My name is Mrs. Senville. My name is Medonia Williams Anthony. These women are the face of a new wave of Seamus farmers in the Eastern Caribbean island of Dominica and are part of local cooperatives established to grow the marine superfood. Natisha and Glenda work together in the Seaforce Seamoss Group in Calabishi on the island's northeast coast, while Medina and Mercia are members of the Grand Bay Seamoss Production Group further south. There is another group in Woodford Hill, just a short drive up the coast from Calabishi. In Calabishi, we love Seamoss, and there is a lot of Seamoss that has been grown in Calabishi, not that we plant it, but it's go, you know, by God. So we love Simos and it, it was like a, 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 a hobby. This is a hobby no more, as many of the group members are seeking to supplement their income through Simos farming. Because our group um, is made up of more women than men. So that would be, you know, the uh, way of um, women empowerment. So, yeah, that's why we study planting seamoss. It will help the women be more independent. Right now, some women doing seamoss as a side job. So, when, in, when, when the industry start growing and you start seeing dollar signs, you start seeing money, you can, right now, seamoss will not be the side job again. It's going to be the, the sole income there for, for the women. Dorian Sanford, technical officer at Dominica's Fisheries Division, sees the promise of a robust CMOS industry on the island. So um, the, the division has embarked on a, on, on a, on a, on a, on a robust um, mission to develop the CMOS industry in Dominica. Traditionally, in Dominica, CMOS was used in the production of beverages in cooking and the wild species was sourced for this purpose. Over the years, demand has increased significantly and producers began sourcing their CMOS from neighboring islands such as Grenada and St. Lucia. The Fisheries Division through the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, has introduced the Yukima Kotanai species from St. Lucia to Dominica in hopes of developing an industry that can meet this demand. To further support the sustainable development of the sector, National consultations were held with various stakeholders to determine the way forward. The FAO has provided equipment such as snorkels, wetsuits, and scuba fins to the farmers and provided hands-on immersive training through a CMOS farming expert from St. Lucia, Mr. Thomas Nelson. Topics covered included harvesting best practices, post-harvest handling, and site selection. We from Fisheries Division, we, um, our, the technical officers, we learned a lot from that, from that training. The farmers themselves um, learned a lot from that training. For example, the type of CMOS technique that we do in Dominica is the, is the, is the monoline technique, where we have one single line, about uh, 110 feet, and we would plant the CMOS on the string. So with the intervention of Mr. Of Mr. Thomas, he introduced other techniques like the, the, the raft technique, or where we could cut the lines a bit, a bit shorter so to make them easier for harvesting and that type of thing. So I, I must say the, the, the groups, everybody turned out in large numbers from, from all locations, Grand Bay, Woodford Hill, Calibishi, and they were very receptive to the information. And presently you can actually see the groups um, putting those, um, those um, training that they, that, they, that they learned from Mr. Nelson into action. And we are happy about that. Happy because production levels have been visibly increased. I must say that production level from the local CMOS to the new species, the Yukima Kotone, has doubled. So we now have, uh, we have groups now harvesting CMOS on a, on a weekly basis, like anywhere between 400 pounds to 720 pounds of CMOS at present. 
So the Simos Industrial is an industry where the women can be managers of their own farm. They can grow the Simos, they can use the product for themselves, and they can use the excess to sell to bring an income for themselves. Yeah, so the Simos industry is not an industry that is so labor intensive. So the women, they can fully participate in it. They can be managers of their own farm. They can um, have their own farm with people working for them and that type of thing. And the Simos industry is a lucrative industry. So it can bring in both income and a source of food for their, for their, for their, for their families. So the women Simos farmers of Dominica will benefit a great deal from the FAO project. I see an expansion, I see more workers, I see in more production and in terms of the production, I see more money according to the super dollar signs on the products. Because of the great demand of CMOS here locally and abroad because I believe that there is a great potential in the CMOS to improve to help to build the country, and not only the country, but people in the country for those who decide to go into CMOS farming, where they can be able to provide for their families, they can be able to assist others. In five years' time, I see that the CMOS production business not just being a farming part, but then in Dominica, we have a factory. We have a factory for the juices, we have a factory for the pharmaceuticals, we have a factory for you know, the cosmetic part of it. A successful CMOS industry is one where, you know, um, our group generating enough money, enough finance that we don't have to look another place. We don't have to have another side job. It will be our main source of income that we can help our family. The future looks promising for the women Simas farmers of Dominica.